What's up guys, my name is Matt and welcome to Downshift. Before I say anything, I wanna say that this is a redemption video. Uh, one of the first times I ever stepped in front of a camera was at Chicago Auto Show. I shot a Navigator. For some reason, 110,000 of you watched that video. Stop watching the video, it's terrible. So this is my redemption video, I'm hoping it's a lot better. So if you do like it, hit that thumbs up, leave a comment, watch the old video. If this is better, please subscribe, I would appreciate it. So let's get into it. So this is the brand new 2018 Lincoln Navigator, and this is the first Lincoln ever to come at $100,000. And for $100,000, you get the black label. My tester is not the black label, but it is the highest trim that you can get, and you get some pretty crazy stuff with it. So this is essentially the 20th anniversary of the Navigator. The first Navigator came out 20 years ago. Uh, no one really cared because soon after that, Cadillac dropped their Escalade, and that's what everyone's been fawning over for the last 20 years. However, in 2018, Lincoln's making a name for themselves. Like I said, this Navigator is all new for 2018, and it is a massive, massive improvement. Uh, first thing that you notice by looking at it is just how imposing and large it is. This thing is over 6,000 pounds. 6,031 pounds. Yee! Now one of the coolest things up front is the illuminated badge. You get that on the black label. Uh, one of the coolest things though is when you have the key in your pocket, as you come to approach your navigator, uh, the closer that you get, the headlights like welcome you, the, f the front badge welcomes you by illuminating, and the headlights don't just turn on, they, they welcome you gradually, as to suggest that you are some elegant monarch arriving to your chariot. It's pretty cool, actually. Also, one thing that I like about the grill is it's not just a typical mesh, but the grill is kind of, the mesh is shaped like the little Lincoln badges, and I think it looks really nice. It looks really high-end. It kind of brings the whole car together. Uh, so from the front is probably my favorite angle of the car. Now I do have to talk about the front three quarters because there is a massive Lincoln badge right here outside my, uh, right in front of my driver's door. That badge itself, it says Navigator, as it, as it should, you know. Uh, <laughs> but the badge is so freaking big. This is how big this car is, people. That badge is the size of my forearm. This big, that's, that's a big badge. Yeah, that's really necessary. Also moving down, you have the active running boards. This isn't new, but for a car this size, it's super helpful. And they uh, they deploy when you open the door. The, the funny thing is, I noticed while I was actually doing my B-roll shots, if you open the driver's side door, the passenger side running board will come out as if it thinks that you have friends because you're rich and you probably have friends, I guess. I don't know, or people that want to use you for your money. Another really cool thing going on on the side of the car is, you know how Land Rover has that like activity key on their Range Rover? It's like a Fitbit that you wear, and essentially you can go and leave the car and do kayaking and outdoorsy stuff without bringing your key and getting wet and getting ruined. Well, this thing, you know, and this is pretty typical on all Ford products, it has the whole, you know, number code dialer thing uh, on the side of the door to unlock it, but I like this one a lot more because the Ford ones are all analog and have actual push buttons. This one is illuminated, and unless you're looking at it directly into the sun, you can't see it. So you have to walk up to the car, press it, and then it'll light up, and then you can punch in your code. So no one knows that it's there until you need it. Now we're moving on to the back of the car. This is my least favorite angle of the car. I think the taillights are a little too big, a little too much. They go all the way across, and I think that's nice. It says Lincoln all the way across. And they were, you know, one of the first people to do that all the way across kind of thing instead of having, you know, the brand on the left-hand side and then the model on the right-hand side. I think it looks fine as far as the Lincoln, but I think the taillights are a little bit much. Um, one of the funniest things, though, is the rear windshield wiper is like this big. So you have a navigator badge the size of my forearm, and then the rear windshield wiper is like this big. So how is it gonna clean anything? This car is freaking huge. It needs a bigger windshield wiper in the back. One thing that I should mention about the rear windshield is that it deploys on its own. So you don't actually have to open the entire tailgate to get in. You know, if you've got something just like a box or like something small from the store and you just wanna put it in the trunk without opening the whole tailgate, uh, you can open up the uh, glass in the back and put your thing in. A lot of older SUVs did this, a lot of newer ones aren't doing it. It's a cost cutting measure basically because you have to you know, attach the windshield wiper to the glass, it has to have its own hinges, all this stuff, but it's a really cool touch. The Forerunner has a, like, a retracting one, it doesn't open this way but it goes down uh, like a window, so I think it's really cool. Now to open the glass you have a button on one side uh, and to open the tailgate you have a button on the other side. And there are very very small little 
navigator icons on the tailgate, you get used to them. The, the one for the whole tailgate's on the right, the one for the little glass is on the left. Um, but you get used to it. You also have a foot kick gesture if you want to get into the tailgate. That's also really nice to have, especially if you've got your hands full of groceries, you want to put it in, uh, it works really well. Now I should say, this is not the long wheelbase model. The long wheelbase model will have a massive, massive trunk, even with the third row up. And with the third row up, you get this fantastic kind of like three cubby thing under your trunk floor. And you can set the floor, the little covers for the cubbies, the three little, you know, whatevers. You can set the three little cubby covers into like a shelf. So if you go tailgating with all your rich friends that, you know, have automatic deploying running boards for them, <laughs> you can set up like a, like a serving station or like a bar in the trunk of your SUV, of your navigator. Blech. Now all this exterior stuff, that's all well and good, but the main thing that you should care about is the interior of this car. The interior and fit and finish of this thing is freaking amazing. This is one thing that Lincoln has really done to distinguish themselves and kind of bring the game up a notch and be more Mercedes competitor, more Audi quality uh, interior, and just kind of leaves Cadillac in the dust. I mean, this interior is in terms of fit and finish and leather and stitching and materials it's much more mercedes than it is cadillac it competes i think it's honestly better than the gls and the mercedes uh, and it's way better than the cadillac especially in terms of interior quality now <laughs> now one of the things that's kind of funny uh, in the black label navigator uh, you have these really pretentious kind of interior trims um, basically they're like themes you don't pick like an interior color or anything you pick an interior theme so there's like chalet uh, rich person cruise you know something crazy like that I don't know go on the website look at it it's funny it's hilarious I love it <laughs> now we've all seen those crazy Lincoln ads where they have this warehouse full of just like autonomous seats that are like waving around like like coral in the ocean or something I don't know um, but these seats actually are super comfortable. Everything about this car is so luxurious. Like it's all comfortable and smooth and supple. That's the whole point of this car. A lot of auto manufacturers these days, they're taking these big SUVs and even the smaller SUVs and deciding, oh, well, I'm gonna make these things like super sporty. Why? I don't buy a massive SUV to go zero to 60. Why would I do that? I buy it because I wanna be insulated. I wanna be you know, transported luxuriously and easily, comfortably. You know, and this thing accomplishes that in spades. It's fantastic. It's so smooth and so refined. It's so quiet on the inside. I'm not bothered. There's a Harley in front of me. Can you hear him? No. It's Har well, it's Harley Fest in Milwaukee, by the way. So cheers to everyone in Milwaukee. Leave a comment, by the way, if you're in Milwaukee. Now, as if the seats didn't move enough, you do have motorized pedals that will come forward or retract, depending on where you want them. Like, why? The seat moves 30 different ways, and it massages you. I can move the seat. <laughs> I can in, I can change individual leg lengths. Why do I need the pedals to move? It's not necessary, but kudos because it's luxurious and money, right? Now, one thing I haven't liked in the past of you know like the MKZ, uh, you know some other Lincolns is that it has like little buttons for your gear selector. I always thought that was kind of weird and a little bit too you know different for my taste. French, maybe I'm old school. I don't know. But these are actually really cool. They kind of hide them away under the front air vents, under the infotainment screen. So they're not like a huge focal point of the cabin, which I think is interesting. But the more I thought about it, I was like, yeah, that kind of makes sense because this car, you know, you're, they don't want you to spend a lot of your time and worry thinking about what gear you're in. They don't want that to be a huge part of your driving experience. Uh, they want it to just be like a comfort and you know, the car's gonna take care of it. It's got the adaptive cruise and lane keep and all that stuff. And that's great, we'll get to that. So they've got these little kind of like levers. You just push it, park. Reverse. Neutral. Constantine, I need drive, please. Drive. It's just a lever that you push and then it's gone. It's right there. Moving down from that, you have all your kind of like volume knobs, uh, your, your radio controls, uh, and all your, your climate controls. You've got three-way ventilated seats, three-way heated seats. I love the ventilated seats. They're on right now. It's a hot day. Absolutely love it. Um, but then this like center like console area, this is an, another problem from the last video uh, that I did in Chicago in February, was I called the center console like a command station from the USS Enterprise because it really does feel like that there's so many buttons and it like comes up at you it's 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 very enterprise-esque if you don't believe me that's fine leave a comment tell me how much you hate me that's fine um, but it's, it's just huge and it's like a command module uh, all of the bins are super deep there's a wireless charging pad there's two USBs there's cup holders there's 
you know, I can fit everything that I want in here, it's fantastic. Now one of the cool things too, as we get into the infotainment, is it's a normal SYNC 3 system. Granted, it's, they've, they've classed it up for the Lincoln, um, but it's the same SYNC 3 system that's been in the, uh, the Raptor that I just shot, uh, the Focus RS, all that stuff, the Mustang. Um, <clears throat> one of the coolest things though that I will talk about is the navigation system because it's got this cool little feature. Uh, it's got, well, it's got a bunch of different stuff. The first thing is breadcrumbs. So it'll keep track of where you went. And then if you wanna, sit, if you wanna tell it, like, I wanna go back home the same way that I came, it'll just, it'll just do that, you know? Or if you don't have it on, uh, you can set breadcrumbs for wherever you went and then it'll tell you exactly how you got there and how to get back. It's pretty cool. Um, but the coolest and, and funniest thing is there's like a, like an eco penalty mode and essentially what it says is this is a big SUV and therefore it's not super efficient. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna suggest routes that we think would be most efficient for you. So <laughs> these routes may take more time to get to your destination than others. So you can set the intrusiveness level of your route calculator to be you know, not super efficient, more efficient or super efficient. I don't know why it would need to do that. Um, I would never use that. I'll pay the extra dollar it takes to get to where I'm going faster. Um, but another really funny thing about the nav system is that you can set routes to, you know, avoid highways. That's pretty normal. That's fine. <clears throat> but you can set routes to avoid ferries. Like, how often is that a problem, Lincoln? I, I mean, granted, like, I live in Milwaukee, and if I wanted to go to Michigan, I could get on the ferry. So... Like for me, it makes sense, I guess, but that's literally only happened one time where I've needed to make that decision. And it was super easy because I went on the Lake Express website, realized it was like 300 freaking dollars to take the ferry. And then I was like, no, I won't do that. Thank you. But I can avoid it now, thanks to Lincoln. So thank you, Lincoln, I appreciate that. I don't wanna be on ferries. Thank you for catering to me. Now in keeping with the really kind of like classy and elegant theme of this car, you do get like seven different colors of ambient lights uh, and they are really cool. Uh, one thing that I'm going to complain about right now, so, you know, don't hate me after this, is in the Mustang, you can set like a My Color, which essentially gives you the entire color spectrum, so you have unlimited colors, and in this, which is like more than double the price, you only get seven colors? Come on. Now I want to bring your attention to the full digital cluster, and this is still one of the coolest things that I love about the auto industry and what they're doing now is the full digital customizable cluster. Um, first of all, the theme when you turn this thing on is like outer space, supernova, blah, blah. You know, your infotainment has like this like very mysterious globe and, you know, galaxy, and when you turn it on, it's got all these like stars and everything, and that's fantastic. It looks nice, honestly. Um, but the funniest thing is the drive modes. So when you turn it into normal mode, you have like this gaseous galaxy star cluster graphic to go along with it. Then when you go to conserve mode, which is like your eco mode, uh, you have a picture of, of the earth and how blue and delightful it is to live here while we haven't destroyed it yet. Uh, and then we, this is the funniest one, ready? Uh, when you get to excite mode, which is like the sport mode, rah, it's back to the future theme. Like they totally went away from like the galaxy theme and they just have two tire strips that are on fire. Like it's the DeLorean and it's 1985 again. Like why? I love it, it's hilarious, but why? Like, tell me why, leave it in the comments. What do you guys think about the, the tire strips? Now you also have inclement weather modes and you have a snow mode. I think it's slippery mode actually and it has like a snow globe on it. So you're like trapped in the snow globe. And then you have like two more modes. You have a four by four mode. Oh, it's just all-wheel drive, so it's fine, it's whatever. Um, I don't know why that wouldn't just automatically be in snow mode. Um, maybe for off-roading, I don't know who's doing that ever. But there's also like a deep conditions mode, which in my mind just means deeper snow. I don't know. I don't know what you mean, Lincoln, by deep conditions. It's deeper snow, I guess, when it's not just a dusting. Now, as we get to the back seat, I want to address this right away. There is no skimping in this car at all. Everything that's luxurious and delightful up here, you know, I've got the, the wonderful machine speakers, there's lighting everywhere and like the door handles and the pockets and the water bottle holders and everything like that. Cup holders, I should say. Everything's the same back there. Everything is fantastic. The seats are incredibly comfortable. You still get all the nice illumination from everything in your cup holder. Um, the rear seats have like a huge center console in between them that's like super deep but it also has a screen in it. 
So, uh, in, yes, you get like uh, like two he two level heated seats. Um, you get you know your own audio controls, your own climate controls, and everything like that. That's fantastic. But the coolest thing is that the second row gets their own screen to control their audio, and you can control like not just the volume, but you can control what station is on, the source. You know, if you want XM radio or you know you want FM or AM or you know what. It's super nice. It's super cool. Like. Why would the back row need that? It's probably your kids. Like, they don't deserve that level of treatment. Also, what they don't deserve is to control the sunshade. Why do they get to... They have a button back there that controls the sunshade of the sunroof. They don't deserve that. They're children. They need to earn that. Yes? Thumbs up if you agree. Let me know in the comments if you agree that children should not have... No, I'm just kidding. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> One last thing that I will say about the second row is that you can option a rear seat entertainment package that's typically in the black label and it's it's fine it attaches like screens to the back of the seats and that's you know it's fine it's whatever uh, it's fairly common but they're terrible they're not responsive they never work um, so don't option them don't waste your money just they don't need them they don't need them they have they have iPhones they have iPads it's fine they don't need they don't need the, the screens on the seats now I'm, I'm bragging about the luxury of the second row and everything like that it's fine I do want to talk about the third row though, and this is what really got me. So I'm getting into the third row, and I'm realizing that not only do I have power reclining seats in a third row, not only do I have a 12 volt in a third row, not only do I have three cup holders in a third row, I have a USB in the third row on each side, but I also have more leg room in the third row of this navigator, it's not the long wheelbase, remember, I have more legroom in the third row of this non-long long, long wheelbase navigator than I have in the back seat of a Mazda CX-5. Just let that sink in for a minute. I have this much space, sorry, I have this much space in the back of a Mazda CX-5, I have this much space in the third row of a Lincoln navigator. Not long wheelbase. Fix it, Mazda, come on. Anyway, the Lincoln is super luxurious, it's fantastic. Now I get to talk about my favorite part, driving dynamics. And here we go, I'm gonna pitch it into this turn here. Oh, it's huge, it leans, oh. Okay, so I'm a little dramatic there, but this thing actually is super fun to drive. I'm in the, the back to the future mode right now. And one thing that I will say is this, this vehicle has the, the Ford Raptor engine, the Raptor that I shot earlier this week. So EcoBoost V6, 450 horsepower, 500 pound feet of torque. This thing has plenty of power, plenty of push, but it's a lot different. It's so much different than the Raptor, where the Raptor has like really abrupt turn, like shifts, um, you know, from the 10-speed automatic. This is so much smoother. The gearing is so smooth. The ride is so supple. Everything is so refined. You know, granted, yes, you know, it's not the fastest, but you're in a huge 6,000-pound SUV. Why are you trying to go fast? It's not about zero to 60. Like this thing is fantastic. It corners super well, actually. There's a little, <coughs> excuse me. There's a little bit of body roll, you know, and that kind of sucks. But what do you expect? You're sitting eight stories off the ground in this thing, you know. There's no need to have, you know, a super planted Porsche Boxster driving experience. I say that Porsche Boxster because there's one right in front of me. But you know, it feels fantastic. There's no slop in the steering wheel at all. It's super precise. The brakes are actually really good. They're really. Uh, meaty and beefy there's no pedal travel there's no dead spot in the steering you know it's fantastic and you know the EcoBoost V6 this is 6,000 pounds and this thing gets going I don't know the 0 to 60 time and if you're asking me you shouldn't because you shouldn't care about a 0 to 60 time in a 6,000 pound SUV but here I'll, uh, I'll give it a little beans here Okay, that's really not that exciting. But still, I mean, it's not s super slow. Um, one of my favorite things actually right now that I'm looking at is the heads-up display. And it gives me everything. It's got time, it's got weather, it's got my speed, it's got the adaptive cruise reading, it's got the speed limit, it's got my distance to empty for my tank. It would have turn-by-turn -turn directions on if I had that up. Like, this has everything. I don't need to look down at my cluster, even though it looks really funny. Um, one thing I forgot to mention about the cluster, actually, is the the numbers in the dash don't light up like your tack and your speedo they the numbers don't light up until you're doing it so i'm doing about 2000 rpm so the two is illuminated from the little you know little arrow 
but like I can't see 6,000 RPM. I can't see that. That's that's dark. I don't know if 6,000 RPM even exists in this car. I, there's it's uncharted territory. We don't know. But anyway, my my heads-up display rant aside, this thing drives really really well. And you know, I'm an enthusiast. I care about you know driving performance and braking and handling and turning and acceleration and everything like that. And that's fine. But that's not what this is about, and you need to remember that. It's so luxurious, it's so smooth, the transmission is phenomenal. I love being behind the wheel of this thing, it's so relaxing, and that's what this thing is about. So, if you're gonna ask me, is this thing worth $100,000? I'm not gonna answer that question. Is this thing worth more than an Escalade? Yes, I will answer that question with a yes. Is this thing worth more than a Mercedes GLS? Maybe, I don't know, I haven't driven the GLS yet, so give me a couple months or a couple weeks, I'll figure it out, I'll get back to you. But this thing is freaking good. So anyway, I do wanna thank my friends at Hiller Ford for making this video possible. Again, they've taken great care of me and they'll do the same for you, you guys know the spiel. Uh, they're fantastic over there, they really are. But anyway, <laughs> I hope you guys like this video. If you like this video more than my previous one, go check it out. Um, <laughs> tell me how terrible that one was, leave a comment here, tell me how much better this one was. Hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next time, guys. Bye.